morning, Cook Spinney. I hope you're all really well and enjoying this new um, second week of school um, after the Easter holidays. It's lovely to see you again. I hope you had a good weekend and a good Monday and you're learning lots of new things at school and also enjoying the beautiful sunshine and blue skies we've been having over the past few days as well. I thought for today's assembly, we could focus on a very sweet, very tender story called The Invisible, and that's by Tom Percival. The story is all about Isabel, a little girl who moves to the far side of the city with her family. Unfortunately, they have to move. It's not within their control. And for Isabel, this is quite saddening because she starts to feel invisible. She feels like she doesn't know anyone and she feels just a bit unseen and not really very good. So I hope you enjoy the story. It's tender and I want you to listen really, really carefully about the main message, which is that we should all look out and see those around us, really, really see them and to understand that we all, no matter where we live, what colour we are, how old we are, what gender we are, we all have a right to belong. I hope you enjoy the story. I really like it. Sit back, relax. Here we go. The Invisible by Tom Percival. Isabel pulled on her favourite jumper. Ice curled across the inside of the window and crept up the corner of her bedpost. It was a very, it was very beautiful and Isabel always noticed beautiful things. But there was no escaping the fact that it was also cold, very cold. It does look cold and wintry, doesn't it? You see, Isabel's family couldn't afford to have the heating on. Isabel's family couldn't afford a lot of things. Things that some people take for granted. But Isabel tried not to worry about the things she didn't have. After all, she and her family had everything that they needed. They had each other. But one day, there just wasn't enough money to pay the rent and all the bills. Isabel and her family had to leave their home, the house which held all of their happy memories. And they had to move to the far side of the city. For the first time ever, Isabel couldn't find anything beautiful to cheer herself up. This part of the city looked exactly how she felt, cold, sad and lonely. A family drove past in a shiny car, but they looked straight through Isabel, as though she wasn't even there. None of the other smartly dressed people seemed to see her either. Isabel looked down and realised that she could barely see her own hands or her feet. She was fading away. Before long, Isabel was completely invisible. She drifted silently down the streets as pale and thin as the wind. And nobody saw her at all. But now that Isabel was invisible, she noticed something she hadn't seen before. Other invisible people. Lots of them. There was an old lady planting flowers in empty paint pots. There was a man who slept on a bench feeding the birds in the park. There was the boy who had been forced to leave his home in another country, helping to mend someone else's bike. But they all seemed so alone. Isabel decided to help. She planted flowers in the paint pots. She looked after the stray animals and she helped to fix things. 
Then, day by day and week by week, other people joined in too. And the more people came together, the more they could all be seen. Soon, Isabel wasn't just visible, she was vibrant, and so was her new home. And that was how Isabel made something very special, one of the hardest things that anyone can ever make. And that is, Isabel had made a difference. Look at that community. It's thriving, isn't it? Everybody's seen, everybody's helping and contributing and joining in. Everyone has a smile on their face, being friendly, being kind and making a difference. And that is the end of the story called Invisible. I hope you've enjoyed that story. It's one that I particularly enjoy because I think a lot of us have sometimes felt in our lives to be a bit invisible and it's not a very nice feeling at all. I'm sure many of you can identify with that feeling. And also, unfortunately, some of us will have made other people feel invisible at some point in our lives too. And that's something we have to work really, really hard at trying our best not to do because nobody wants to feel unseen, unloved or invisible. It's probably one of the worst feelings that you can ever, ever feel. So your challenge for this week and for the weeks ahead is to look out for anyone who feels a bit lonely, a bit sad. Maybe you'll even identify somebody who doesn't look lonely and sad, but who you think actually that person is not being seen by many other people, but you be the one that sees them, sees them for who they really are, that special, unique individual that they are. And you, your challenge is to go out of your way to make that person feel visible, not invisible, look after them and help them to realize and to see that they are valued in our school and in our society. I hope you can step up to that challenge. I'll be very excited to hear um, how you've helped other people in and around school and the community. Okay, Cooks Bunny, let's close our eyes, bow our heads or look at the candle for our reflection time. It's not very bright, this candle, but we'll, um, we'll try our best. Thank you for our homes, for our families, for food, for water, electricity. Thank you for school and for learning and for our teachers. Help us to see others, really, really see them for who they are and the fantastic people they are. And help us to always be kind in our actions as well as our words. Okay, everyone, that concludes our assembly for today. I hope you have a really lovely Tuesday. I am very much looking forward to seeing you all on Thursday. Enjoy Wednesday, see you on Thursday, and enjoy Tuesday as well. Take care. Bye.